I want to take a second to thank every single member of the Honeybook and Rising Tide team, as well as our local Tuesdays Together chapter leaders and moderators who have been fighting to save small businesses throughout this entire global pandemic. Today, we are honored and excited to have two leading financial experts joining us. I want to take a second to welcome up our first guest, Ashley Ebert. As a lifelong entrepreneur, Ashley has felt called to help others chase their dreams. When she started her wedding planning company, The Simply Elegant Group, it was a one-woman operation. She never dreamed that years later it would grow to be one of the largest planning companies in the country with a team of over 40 employees across eight locations. As a natural born connector, Ashley now gets to share what she's learned through the Abundance Group, a group coaching membership for wedding professionals. Ashley is proof that when you're intentional about the approach and attitude you bring into every interaction, you will build a future that's paved with abundance and joy. Ashley, thank you so much for being here today. Yes, I am so excited to be here with you guys. Taking on this stimulus bill, I think everyone is confused and terrified of like what is going on. I really wanted to kind of give a 10,000 foot view of like what's going on because I think there it just feels like complete chaos. Yeah. Um, and everything happens so fast. So that's a huge kind of catalyst in what's going on. With this bill in particular, I also wanted to mention that they're using current institutions to help funnel cash and move this quickly. So they're using them as funnels. So that's why we see the IRS is being used to help with the checks. Uh, state unemployment is involved, banks. Like that's why they're using those things. Even though this is something that's never been done before, that's kind of how they're funneling and using those different institutions. So um, it's truly a groundbreaking bill. Um, it's completely understandable, again, that people are kind of overwhelmed and confused. So really about how much it's giving, $2.2 trillion, there's never been a stimulus of that size, but then also how fast they did it. They did it in days and not months. That's what's happening. So right. yes, there's a lot of kind of interpretation in what's going on. So feeling, I think, at ease with that of like everybody's kind of confused and that's hopefully what we're here to help with. And these institutions are just leveraging what they have available because that's, again, we know as small business owners, we need money now, right. yesterday. Right. Um, so that's why they're doing that. That's why the SBA is involved in all of that. All of us are, we understand the impact of this bill and it's why we wanted to show up for you guys. So we're really on the front lines. This is something that's lifetime changing. But it was so important for us to give voice and talk and have a place to have this conversation. I just really wanted to kind of set the tone to have people kind of feel that that's the climate of what's going on right now and expect things to change and vary state to state. Could you give us a brief overview of these stimulus checks at a high level? You know, who's getting them? How much money does each person receive? And sh when should we receive them? Yeah. So again, a lot of confusion around it. So I'm going to do my best to clarify with the current information that I have. Y'all might hear me say that a couple of times more today because I want to be really clear and it's really to help you. But basically these checks are $1,200 per adult, $500 per child under 17. Okay. Your eligibility is based on your income. So $75,000 per, you know, per person or 150,000, uh, if you file jointly, you will get the entire amount. Basically, if you're between 75 and 99 as an individual, you're going to get some variation again, based on your income for married couples, 150,000 to 198,000, you're going to get some variation of this rebate. So it's basically reduced kind of by your adjusted gross income accordingly. The vast majority of people on, I think this webinar, myself, my family included, um, we will get the $1,200 uh, check and then again, $500 per child under 17. Amazing. And when should people expect to receive that? So they have said three weeks from when the, the bill became law. I think it's ambitious, again, mm -hmm. just to um, set expectations, um, but they have said three weeks. However you have filed your tax returns, most of us small business owners probably pay in. Those payments that you're making, if you're doing that through a, a bank account automatically, that they just use that. Otherwise, if you submit the payments by mail, they will do it that way. So um, yeah, it's again, funneling through current already built institutions is the fastest way they can give you the money. Okay. And then do these have to be paid back or is this like a straight check? So no, the rebates do not need to be paid back. Right. The talk around this comes from basically this stimulus check is a credit on your 2020 income tax. Again, it's a one-time payment 
Um, and there's two opportunities to actually get the check. So if you have filed your 2018 or your 2019, you're eligible to get it. If you're within those income ranges for those years, you're going to get it right away. You're going to get the first wave of them. If you're not, so let's say you made over $100,000 as an individual, but 2020, um, you make less than that. You'll actually be eligible when you file your 2020 taxes. So there's two different times you can get these checks. Who is eligible for unemployment? Does this include self-employed people and independent contractors? Give us an overview of who is eligible to receive these unemployment benefits. Yes, it does. Um, I'm going to kind of talk through a list of people, but yes, it does include self-employed independent contractors. You are eligible if you're self-employed or part-time and lost work due to the coronavirus. If you have received a COVID diagnosis or if you're taking care of anybody within your household that has that made it so you couldn't be employed. Wow. Um, if you're relying on daycare or a daycare facility to take care of your child and that facility is closed due to the coronavirus and it allowed you not be able to work. If you had to self quarantine due to a healthcare provider's advice, if you're unable to work because of uh, imposed quarantine, if you are about to start a new job but couldn't, if you have been immediately laid off from a job, you are eligible. Uh, if you're unemployed, partially unemployed, or unable to work because your employer shut down. But do you file for unemployment or do you enroll in a new program called the Paycheck Protection Program? But that is the unemployment side of who is eligible. Self-employed independent contractors are a part of the expanded unemployment benefit. Who's not eligible? Are there any sort of groups that would be considered ineligible for this? Yes. Workers that work from home, that work for an employer, that has the ability for them to work from home or telecommute. Okay. So this is not self-employed people that work from home, like right, me, I work from home all the time. So workers that are able to work from home, that's what that's talking about. That's not talking about self-employed people that wear yoga pants all day, because that's me. For those receiving paid or sick leave or are on paid leave, so if you are on like maternity leave before this, again, you're you're already getting paid. You're already, your income is still coming in. So they, they don't want you to double dip, essentially. If you are trying to get a job before all this happened and haven't gotten a job, they wouldn't be eligible unless so basically if you I think the deadline is um, January 27th so if you were on un unemployment prior to that you would still be on that kind of wave of unemployment after that date is kind of you're under this umbrella of the new unemployment policies the other ones that aren't included are people that have quit their job so if you quit because you were afraid of being exposed and that was a choice that's someone who would be ineligible unless a healthcare provider again told you that you needed to self quarantine or that you needed to um, protect kind of the health on that side of it and how much money are we talking about uh, in terms of receiving yeah. unemployment benefits this is a great question. And I think um, biggest thing here is we're using the unemployment funnel and that's delivered by the state. So this is where states um, have different laws that they kind of impose within unemployment. So it's calculated based on your previous income from the state in which you live. The other really cool part that they're doing, and this is where you've got to work the numbers. So you're going to have your base state benefit plus the federal government is kicking in an additional $600 a week. An example that we've talked about is for California, the maximum benefit is $450 a week. Um, you would receive an additional $600 from the government, so your total unemployment benefit would be $1,050 every week. Mm -hmm. kind of those two different components. The states do have to give these checks out weekly. They can give them in two separate amounts if they want, or they can just do it in one in one payment, but they do have to submit those to you weekly. And how long does unemployment last? Again, very state by state. So really make sure that you're diving into whichever state you live in, what the policies are within that state. But most states will um, provide benefits for 26 weeks, roughly 26 weeks. Okay. The new bill also adds an additional 13 weeks for a total of 39 weeks maximum eligibility. However, that $600 that the federal government gives is only available for four months. So you could basically get the federal amount through the end of July, and then you would get your base unemployment from your state. Two separate amounts, but given to you. However, you can use that. Check with your state is the best advice there. This is brand new 
being rolled out incredibly quickly. And I know, for example, in the state of Maryland, within our Tuesdays Together group in Annapolis, we were talking about, hey, they don't have the self-employed section ready yet, right, at yep. one point. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of new for many states. Do you happen to know anything in, re in regards to that? Is that something that, like you said, like they're just trying to get caught up with these new federals kind of you know, widening of the eligibility? Um, mm -hmm. Is that why perhaps some people are having trouble today finding it? Yeah, I think two things. Uh, the first thing is the sheer volume of people <laughs> applying for these benefits. Um, I think it was something like 20,000 um, applied the week prior, and then it was like 3.2 million people okay. when um, states started to mandate shelter in place and stay-at-home orders. So that is like an incredible saturation that are hitting these websites. So one, check tomorrow, check right. on Friday. So they're really truly updating this live time. Biggest piece is it's coming, just keep being persistent is the best advice that I think that I think we have. Now let's jump into payroll prote protection program. Okay, yeah. what is it? Could you share a little bit more with yeah. us about that? So the paycheck protection program is fully forgiven funds. So this is the idea that it, it starts out as a loan, but then if you're paying for payroll costs, if you're paying for interest on your business mortgage, wow. if you're paying your rent and your utilities, anything that you utilize that, that for is forgiven. We call that free money. What they're trying to do with this program is make sure that you aren't laying off your employees and now they're all going on to unemployment. The caveat here is as a self-employed person, the same thing applies, right? So the big question is how much can I get for this loan? It is two and a half times your average monthly payroll. So if for example, you know, simply like we have a $10,000 payroll and the max benefit for us then would be $25,000 that we could get. 75% of that must be used for payroll purposes. So let's say you use 80% for payroll and 20% you're using for utilities, paying your rent on your studio. That is rolled into an SBA loan at a ridiculously low rate, um, but it allows you to kind of have capital for some of those other things as well. But again, the whole goal for this is that it's paying for income, paying for payroll for people to keep their jobs. Um, because the idea too is if, everyone gets laid off, businesses shut down. When we come on the other side of the health concern of this, we're not gonna have the businesses to rehire the employees. So the goal with the government was like, let's fund money through these small businesses to ensure that they're keeping these opportunities available. Fully forgiven, must be kept on payroll. So let's say one of the biggest questions I also get is, I laid off a whole bunch of contractors or employees rehire them and rehire them fast because basically anything you spend to keep them get, keep their income going is going to be forgiven. Sole sole proprietors, sole entrepreneurs, you know, one one mom and pop shops, right? Those consider those considered payroll. Those are considered income. So we want to do the work to see if it's a, a more valuable for you for more cash in your pocket for you to look at unemployment with what the state gives you and the $600 a week with the with the federal government or this payroll protection program. Fewer than 500 employees, um, if you're self-employed, sole proprietors, independent contract, you are eligible for this. We got a question from Paige Vaughn and she asks, I'm curious about SBA disaster loan assistance through the stimulus package. Mm -hmm. Who qualifies for these loans and what does loan forgiveness look like? So super important to point out, the S SBA is an entity that they're using to funnel money. Okay. The SBA disaster loan program is a loan. The SBA Paycheck Protection Program is the forgiven payroll piece of it. The SBA loans have to be paid back. The Paycheck Protection Program, the PPP, will be forgiven if used for wages, benefits, your business rent, all of that. And the other thing I want to point out, the opening dates for Payroll Protection Program are April 3rd, Friday. <laughs> So in 48 hours. Yes. So basically the first wave of small business owners, sole proprietors starting April 10th, that's when independent contractors and self-employed individuals can apply. Okay. So it is uh, the utmost importance that you're talking to your accountant, that you're connecting almost $350 billion. There is a cap. So just make sure you're you're available. You're you're really connecting with your accountant that you know those dates. On Friday is when it opens. 
for um, small businesses that second wave is the 10th. So that's really important to know. What are the interest rates like and what are the payment terms at a high level? Yeah, so again, two separate things. Disaster loan okay. is a 30 year, 4% non-forgivable loan. The payroll protection is a half a percent, two year term, for anything that is not forgiven. So we talked about that you have to use 75% for payroll, so that other 25%, it'll basically roll over into a conventional, like a typical uh, SBA loan, and you'll have different terms to pay that off. Connect with us on Instagram. If we didn't get to your question, or if you have a specific question, we're gonna stay up, we're gonna help you, we're gonna get to all those questions, anything we can um, to make sure that we're helping you individually. So um, that's the easiest place to just send you all over to Instagram and just hit, you know, shoot us a message and we'll do all we can to help. Um, the other thing that we're doing at the Abundance is we're gonna release a full stimulus bill report later this week Amazing. with all the new uh, US Treasury stuff. So you can get that information. It's just kind of a, a place where you can drop your email, your name and email if you're interested. It's just the abundance.group uh, forward slash bill. So if you want access to that, go to that website. That way, um, we're just gonna kind of do what we did here of like uh, weave through all of it and give you really great kind of play by play of what's going on. And I'm sure Matt will help us with that as well. So we're all just so committed to help you and be there for you. So that's on our end, anything we can do, we're, we're all in. Yeah. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Ashley, thank you so much. And just one last time for everyone, um, you know, who maybe didn't catch it, Instagram at the abundance group and yep. online theabundance.group. Correct. Okay, Correct. fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. This was absolutely fantastic. Yeah.